Welcome back, Rock Raiders. Slugger here, and today we will be looking at set 4940 Granite Grinder. Let's dig in. Axel is our driver today, and he is going to become quite the familiar face over the next few episodes. He is wearing the iconic Rock Raiders helmet, complete with trans neon green visor to protect his face from falling debris. Inexplicably, we get very little in the way of accessories this time around. Just a few odd hand tools, including a scanner, buzzsaw, and jackhammer. However, the most notable absence is the lack of a boulder or energy crystal. Bad luck. For a set this size, it's really a shame not to get either one here. Speaking of size though, the Granite Grinder makes great use of its 109 pieces. Much of its stature comes from some of the larger elements, but I feel these parts are sometimes the subject of unwarranted ridicule. The term that gets thrown around a lot is juniorization, but what does it really mean? By and large, the general consensus seems to be that it refers to the LEGO Group's past tendency to use larger pieces and simplified builds in the early 2000s. The problem is that there is no metric of measurement to decide whether a set is juniorized or not. It's all a matter of perspective. So, in this slug's opinion, juniorization is not inherently a bad thing. Plenty of great LEGO sets were still released in this time period, and they used their larger pieces to great effect. Obviously, there will always be exceptions, but I think some folks are too quick to point their finger and call foul. In fact, as much as I admire modern building techniques, I often find that sets these days are over-engineered, containing more pieces than necessary to deliver on a concept and driving up the price and complexity as a result. These builds can sometimes look busy, and I frequently find it difficult to appreciate the hard work of LEGO designers and mockists when the end result feels like it was left in the oven too long. I won't dispute that many modern designs look amazing and have a much higher level of detail, but in a way, I find they leave little to the imagination. It's a balancing act. LEGO to me is at its best when you use just enough bricks to construct the idea and let your imagination fill in the rest. Okay, back to the granite grinder. The main play function is the swiveling legs, creating a sense of striding through the underground caverns. I might be in the minority here, but I quite like the leg mechanics and actually prefer them to more articulated designs. Now, I, I don't mean that every LEGO walker should use swiveling legs, and the designers were clearly only working within their means here but I think that these limitations inadvertently provided the granite grinder with a unique stature that couldn't have been achieved otherwise. Plenty of LEGO's past swivel walkers could have benefited from modern leg building techniques, but I firmly believe the granite grinder is not one of them. These legs also host one of my favorite features in this set, tool storage and at minifigure height. It's a design choice that's so utilitarian and unsleek, I love it. Since we're on the topic of form and function, I think the Granite Grinder serves as the pinnacle of Rock Raider design and color distribution. Now, I know that sounds like hyperbolic praise, but I think some Rock Raider fans have slept on the quality of this set, and here's why. From every angle, the Granite Grinder looks formidable and iconic. The color palette is realized seamlessly and appears effortless across its body. From textured elements to stripes of color in all the right places, to classic large pieces and that legendary chrome drill, the Granite Grinder is the Rock Raiders theme firing on all cylinders. As an all-around set, taking the price into consideration as well, I think this was the high watermark for the series. It did take several design drafts before we arrived at what we have today. Luckily, many of these prototype images have resurfaced in recent years, and we can start to trace the lineage of the set. In what we can assume to be one of the first passes of the granite grinder design, we can see that it utilized many Technic parts to create a jumping mechanic. 
Besides that, we can also see the early ideas for the drills and roll cage design. It's neat to see the rear turbines were there since the beginning, though most everything else would change. In this next draft, we can see that the drills more resemble the final pieces we received in the theme. The roll cage is still narrow, but some thought as to how to attach it to the body has been given here, eventually leading to the ratcheted connecting joints used in the final release. We also see the headlight builds and black tubes that will become Rock Raider staples, though they won't make it into this set in the end. Finally, we have a couple of drafts that were physically built. It's very likely there were more than just these two, and many models might have existed at the same time, so it becomes a bit tougher to draw lineage in this case. In one design, we see the reduction down to one drill, though the narrow roll cage, black tubes, and headlights remain. The legs are approaching their final form, but this granite grinder walks like it just spent the whole day in the saddle. In this final image, we see the legs are almost identical to what we received upon release, but now we're back to having two drills. The black tubes and headlights are gone though, so it's anyone's guess as to which is more recent, though my money's on this one. Nonetheless, it is exceedingly rare to have access to this many prototypes for a LEGO set, making the granite grinder a unique outside glimpse into the development process. Normally, I would mention modifications I made to the set, but in the case of the granite grinder, only the interior received a few upgrades. Some translucent pink and blue studs can also help bring life to the rear turbines. Otherwise, I think this build is top notch and holds up well today. Just like the previous sets, the Granite Grinder features three alternate builds on the back of the box, with one of them also appearing on the front of the box too, weirdly enough. Let's start with my favorite of the three. This large stationary drilling platform, it has a great real world industrial look to it. The second alt build continues this practical approach by serving as a smelting station, turning old or unnecessary parts back into usable materials. Lastly, all sense of realism is thrown out the window for a safety hazard with jets flying drill craft. While the last build is certainly the most flashy, I think it's the two stationary builds that steal the show and add the most to the Rock Raiders mythos. I'd recommend either one of them, and they'll likely make some more background appearances in future videos. I'd be remiss not to mention the additional alternate build included in LEGO Mania Magazine November-December 1999. This build, named the Cavern Crusher, was inspired by then seven-year-old Donald Gregorich and features some fairly novel and advanced design ideas. We're just gonna gloss over Donald's illegal building techniques, and I can't remember the last time an alternate build required using the extra pieces included in a LEGO set. Still, Donald, if you're watching, good job. In conclusion, the Granite Grinder rocks. Great colors, great design, and a fun build using both system and Technic elements bring everything together here. I don't mean to overstate my love for the Granite Grinder, but this is seriously an awesome LEGO set. Luckily, they are both plentiful and affordable on the aftermarket, so you need not hesitate in picking one up for yourself. That'll wrap up another day in the mines. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I hope to see you next time for some high adventure deep underground.